Hi, I'm Alex Archbull, and I've been buying and selling antiques since I was nine years old. From basements to scrapyards, I'll look just about anywhere I can to find lost antiques and collectibles. And sometimes I'll go big and buy everything. I never know what's going to happen or who I'm going to meet. This is our life, this is our adventure, and this is Curiosity Inc. Hi everybody, welcome to today's episode. I am en route back over to the house today. I've taken a couple days off from uh, clearing the property, which is unlike me, but that's because I went really far away to go dig around inside of an abandoned granary and also buy some old toys off a person while I was uh, away. So um, it was put to good use. <laughs> Needless to say, I'm a little tired this morning um, after doing an 11 hour drive the other day, but we're back at the house today. Um, I've got a couple goals, a couple things that I wanna do today. Um, first off, I have to get um, a lot of garbage prepped and ready to go in the dumpster because that's going to be showing up tomorrow morning. Um, so I've got to do a sweep through the house, literally sweep through parts of the house um, and get uh, garbage outside. The other thing is that um, I want to make a clean space, uh, a clean room and start moving stuff up and into it so I can get the house um, sort of consolidated. So a fair bit of work to do today. Um, I'm gonna try my best to hopefully get a whole pile of it done before the end of the day. I don't know how far I'll get, but I guess uh, we'll know by the end of this video. So stay tuned for another clearing, cleaning, uh, and uh, exploring episode on Curiosity Inc. Stay tuned. Now, I have brought these little folding bins, which actually I picked up on another adventure but they are quite good at doing the trick. They all fit inside the trunk of my car. I can load them up with stuff and then fold them down when I'm done. Perfect for transporting stuff from a house like this. And let's get that clipped in place. I do have to start clearing off the bookshelves and the top of the mantle from all this debris because tomorrow the guys are coming to get the furniture out of here. So I do have to kind of get my tail in gear here and start loading up all the stuff off the top so they can just haul this stuff straight out. So we're going to get, you know, what is this, tumblers, brand new pair of shoes for whatever reason, well, for the reason of wearing on your feet, uh, sunglasses, a Big Ben West clock, just anything that maybe was a little bit more salvageable some of these old cookbooks I'll stack that in there so i'm going to continue getting this pretty much all cleared and cleaned and put away and uh that's the the goal will be to get this room cleaned up as much as possible every step is a step in the right direction at least that's the hope oh there's jewelry this pearl necklace. Well, that looks like it's real pearl too. Jewelry I will set aside and bring back separately. Some boxes and stuff. Little Glimmer of the Ghost. Well, that's a Hallmark stuffed animal. And there's a lot of stuffed animals in this house. That is one thing there's no lack of ring boxes. Those will come in handy when we sort the jewelry later. Well, let's keep at it. Getting all the cabinets emptied out and transferring the stuff off the table over here. So I'm organizing it like garbage bags and cleaning supplies and stuff because I can still use these. All of this stuff is good uh, and I can use it while I'm here working. Uh, I did find this though, which looks to be uh, lemon oil for uh, refinishing wood. Well, not refinishing, but for oiling wood. I'm gonna try just a little bit of it on this counter. You can kind of see in the light. Um, I'm gonna apply a liberal amount. Use one of these old rags I found and see if we can bring that surface back just a little bit better than it was before. Working pretty good. I'll 
probably have to do that to all of these. Um, these aren't a famous brand of mid-century furniture, but they are solid wood and they certainly are a popular style. And so they should sell well at auction. Um, either way, somebody's going to get a good piece of furniture out of these, but uh, I don't want to deliver them all dusty. So we'll continue cleaning as we go. Now I'm going to show you something. See the keys on this keyboard? The person that lived here was a heavy smoker. I'm just going to give you a little sample of how much nicotine is on this piano. You start to see, you see the difference? That is crazy. And that gets in your lungs, that stuff. Okay. Piano definitely has some buildup on it. I'm probably gonna wipe down the whole thing because uh, it's a little bit nasty and it won't take that much effort to clean it, but shocking. And that is all over the walls too. In fact, this whole house is basically a layer of nicotine. You can see where the pictures were. Same thing, it's that nicotine all over everything. So giving stuff a, a wipe down and clean is going to be necessary. And some of it, like this table, I don't know. If, I mean, it could be repurposed and salvaged, but some of it uh, is a little worse for wear. I think I hear the other dumpster. It's near. He's getting that offloaded. Um, that is for the couch. Somebody said, why don't you donate it? No. It's uh, stained in nicotine. Who knows what else is on it? Yes, maybe you could clean it, but I don't want to make somebody sick. Um, and so that couch is going to go. Uh, same thing somebody said, well, what about the carpets? Well, yeah, you can professionally clean them. Um, but uh, I don't trust the environment this has been in. And again, if we're selling stuff at auction, I've got to make sure things are reasonably clean. Uh, so some things will end up in the trash I would have liked to have saved, but you know, it's a matter of the environment and uh, it not worth being the risk. But with that dumpster here though, uh, I can actually start getting some of this garbage I've been collecting. This room, I've been putting the sellable stuff in. This room, I've been piling trash in the corner. And I was just about to start working my way through the basement, but I think I'll take a moment and start filling that dumpster. Well, that is a big difference already having that uh, carpet out of there. But the floor is a completely different color where the carpet was. Surprisingly, the floor doesn't look terrible in here. If it wasn't for the basement wreck in the whole joint, this might be a usable house again, but not without a bunch of work. Well, I'm gonna get the uh, rest of the bags loaded up. I have a dumpster to fill and I don't have much time to do it. So I've gotta get busy here because if they're coming with the truck tomorrow to pick up the furniture, that means this dumpster is gonna have to be out of the way. And uh, yeah, it means I gotta hustle. <laughs> that's, that's basically it, I gotta hustle. All right, let's go downstairs and see the progress I've made so far. Um, the upstairs is looking pretty good. Kitchen's getting emptied. A lot of the garbage is gone from the upstairs, but the downstairs is still a bit of a mess. I mean, it's not as bad as it was, but certainly there's a lot to do. I uh, was working my way through the laundry room and I cleared off this cupboard here. Look, the old ivory snow is still on the shelf, but look at all the mouse debris in here. This is why I'm wearing a mask. I've got bad allergies to these little guys. And uh, I don't wanna, I can't be taken out too early in the day with sneezing and coughing and itchiness. So mask up and uh, see if I can find a dustpan and a broom and we'll get this cleared off and get that old shelf hauled out of here. You know, I was just taking the uh, trash out to the dumpster and as I'm walking back, and I didn't notice the first time I was here. There are amethyst uh, and crystal 
giant uh, quartz, other sorts of interesting rocks right in the ground here. You guys see that? Those are uh, amethyst points. And that's a big chunk of amethyst. I think these are all kind of interesting uh, chunks of stone. I have to come back with a pitchfork and see what those are. Yeah, look at that. Three giant quartz stones right there. Who knows what else is buried down there. Those are gonna come home though. Those might be nice by the garden. Probably what they thought too. But since this place is likely gonna be a teardown, so I'm told, no point leaving that behind to get uh, shoveled in the rubbish. Yeah, making my way into that closet, which I haven't fully explored yet. So there are still places around here I haven't looked. Um, and I found a silver, well, it's not silver, silver plate, but still, um, silver plated teapot. There was some original oil paintings, including this very 1930s looking, it looks like they use feathers and they uh, painted fairies on the glass to look like they're sort of frolicking in the forest. Kind of a neat thing from back then. Fairies were really big in the 20s, or teens and 20s. Uh, okay. Now I suspect most of this is gonna be stuffed animals. So I'm gonna go find a uh, either a box or a clear bag to put those in. Uh, oh geez, I just hit my melon on that. Gosh, that hurt. It's like really hard old plaster, but look at this. Beanie Baby. Some sort of little gift set here. So, Platinum Membership Collectors Club. And it's in here with the original bag from the store it came from, from Hallmark. So, it was like bought brand new and then just all this stuff was bought brand new and just stuffed in the closet. It's been down here for probably 20 years. So I'm going to get anything that's a stuffed animal, like a teddy bear, out of here, and then we'll see what we're left with. Well, I was digging in the back. found a spider that was alive. The only other live thing I've found in here is a Sony ashtray, which is kind of cool. A couple early Winnie the Pooh books when we were young and now we are six and an old Wizard of Oz. How old? I don't know. See, luckily it wasn't on the floor because most things on the floor are toast. 1899. And this is the 1903 edition. That's a very early Wizard of Oz. And it has illustrations. Gosh, that's kind of it's kind of neat actually. It looks like there's a paper cover affixed on top of this green one, but anyway, 1903, well over a hundred year old copy of Wizard of Oz. It was a good find. But there was this in the back as well. So a uh, little bit of kind of costume jewelry in that one, kids jewelry. Marble, you know, keepsakes. This moldy box that used to have chocolates in it is now moldy on the inside, but look, there's a little locket. Maybe some jewelry on the bottom. Those were Burke's boxes. And there is a little bit of jewelry in the mix here. So that was there. I don't know what else is in here. A little perfume bottle. Fortunately, this did not uh, weather well. It's a little silver feather. It's an English, made in England, Colport. A little rose brooch. So there was some jewelry hidden way at the back. You know what, I'm gonna put it inside of this little silver teapot. 
save whatever we can out of here. That looks like a token. Something you get at a gas station. Don't think that's real pearl. There's a, oh, where'd that go? That's a really old penny or half penny English. So we'll save what we can, salvage what we can. Look, this little butterfly almost lost to time. Now it's saved. We'll get the last of this stuff out, but probably one of the weirder things I found in there. Look at this. Provincial Laboratory of Public Health, University of Alberta, pathology, and it says premarital female. Well, what the heck is in here? They're still sealed up. Is this somebody's, I mean, I don't know what they have in there. Premarital female. Samples of some kind that are very well sealed. This, this tape that's on there, I imagine that would be pathological specimen. So um, never found anything like that before inside the basement of a house. First time for everything. Well, I'm not done in the basement yet, but I've sure made a lot of progress. I'm gonna take a break though from the subterranean level there and come out to the garage and uh, do sort of an assessment of what trash is out here. Actually, I'm gonna bring this garbage can with me so I could fill it as I go. May as well keep myself busy. Again, the mission here is to get that dumpster full and I really want this to be my last dumpster of this house. Oh, I hope it's going to be the last dumpster of this house. We'll find out. Okay. Well, I guess I could use this little cart to wheel stuff out to the dump. There's uh, probably going to be an, a lot of trash in here. I don't know how far I have to go in the garage in terms of cleaning it out, but I'm going to make a dent, that's for sure. I am going to keep this old lawnmower because I think it's just too cool. I mean, I'm not going to keep it personally, but I'm going to set it aside. Uh, but anything that is just actual garbage can go to the garbage. Cleaning up in the garage, these are all bottles, so those can all be recycled. Um, there is a really old uh, Disney. It's got Cinderella and Mickey Mouse on it. It's a little uh, child's bassinet, but it's covered in mold. And unfortunately, I don't think that's going to be able to be saved. Would have been kind of cute, though, and that's got some real age to it. Yeah, Bambi on the other side. This table that I'm looking at, heavy metal, industrial-looking table. The fellow was a doctor back in the, let's say, 40s and 50s. Does that not look like a portable sort of exam table? Very crude, but I think that might be a doctor's table right there. You know, hop up on the bench, Mrs. Schwartz. We'll check you out. <laughs> and then Mrs. Schwartz had to put her mind in a different place while the doctor inspected and made sure things were okay. Um, I have no idea if there's any value in a table like that, but um, I might check with a fellow I know who collects that sort of stuff and see if he's got any interest in it. Oh my gosh, finally can access this trunk over here. What's this? Oh, it's a whiz oil can. Of all the stupid things to keep, I will set that aside. It's a 1940s or 50s era automotive piece. Lying in the dirt, that's why you gotta really look. A couple of matched 1971 Alberta license plates. And I found a rearview mirror for a car. Can you play a game of let's guess what car this is from? I'm guessing a early 50s or late 40s car. That is a tiny rearview mirror. Mind you, Volkswagens didn't have big mirrors. But most of the stuff I've seen here is General Motors, so 
Guessing it wasn't a Volkswagen. Let's see what's in the trunk. Look, there's a little tractor on the ground. Too bad. Rusted and missing parts. But I have been very curious to know what's inside of this trunk. So without further ado, oh, are the claps? No, it should open. Oh, there we go. Oh, it is uh, household looking kind of stuff. Whew, is it musty, 1944. Invasion starts. Wow. This stuff in here is from the Second World War. I don't know if it all is, but some of it is. Newspapers. Uh, well, it looks like they've got a lot of screens. Oh, there's some magazines and stuff. Oh, there's all sorts of stuff in here. Oh. I think, are these for silk screening? Maybe those are just window screens. They kind of look like silk screen screens for art. Not 100% sure. I'll leave them in case they're for the in case they're for the house though. I guess I'll just pull up a log. Hope it's not full of like fire ants or something. If you see me jumping around in, in a couple minutes, you know it was. Okay, oh what's that? A little chalk. What do we have in here? Somebody's drawn a little picture of a lady on the back here. They did a good job of it. Crepe paper. This old wartime Esquire, the magazine for men. 1954. There's a bunch of magazines in here. A couple little cases empty and I think I'm gonna go ahead and say empty on this one too if I could get in it feels empty though the leather bag that's flattened beyond recognition Rogers Brothers anniversary set the boxes maybe for all that silver where I found in the basement. Yeah. Empty. We found a whole pile of silverware down in the basement a couple days ago. A couple episodes ago. Ballet dancer. Picture frame, old game board for Chaster Checkers. Curtain rods, and there's a box. What's in the box? Well, there's a little doll. And it looks like some dollhouse furniture. And maybe a little carriage. So maybe some little girl toys in here. Yeah. Well, that's kind of neat. I'll set that aside. Of course, the trunk itself is kind of cool. But these are all... 1940s newspapers that are rolled up. I wonder if there's a picture in there. I'm going to unroll that and see what's inside. Well, it was a map inside of that newspaper showing Northwest Territories and there's Edmonton. Red Deer and Calgary. So there's where I am right now. If this was a really old map, Edmonton was actually part of the Northwest Territories. But look how long that's been wrapped up. Look at the Chevy truck they're advertising. It's actually kind of cool. 
Eisenhower. Hmm. It's just always kind of fun to find stuff that's been sitting this long. So you never know why they kept it or what's in here. Magazines are a little soggy, a little worse for wear. Do not feed or annoy. The covers on these magazines, most of which wouldn't fly nowadays. The scrapbook, The Royal Visit to Canada, 1951. Oh, I see, it was so you could scrapbook, and they did. They, they did make a royal scrapbook in here. Let's see what else is in here. More Esquire magazines. Another scrapbook. And it looks like maybe Christmas themed. Oh, paper dolls. Paper doll set at the bottom. Well, I'm going to work on cleaning this out. If I come across anything super cool, I will let you guys know. Mind you, some of you are probably finding this interesting as I go through, but others are probably going, hey, we don't want to see that. Oh wait, another scrapbook, let's see. Royal scrapbook, another one. It's early enough. At Home with the Birds, a book on nesting habits. You know, oddly, uh, James Bond was a, uh, uh, the name James Bond came from the James Bond uh, book of birds. Sports, let's see, skating, skiing. Looks like an early school assignment, winter sports page. And then you got to draw your favorite sort of winter sports. And write a little assignment about it. So this was a teacher's way of getting their class engaged. Maybe which celebrities you liked. I saw there was a Rita Hayworth in here. There she is. Celebrity scrapbooks. I wonder how long it would take before a magazine would get completely ripped apart at home before your kids got a hold of it. I might keep this little drawing on the board to set aside because that was actually nicely done. It's kind of fun little art. The scrapbooks are kind of interesting to go through, actually. There's another one here. And that one didn't get a whole lot in it. Another royal family scrapbook. Oh, hey! Did you see, hang on, where is it? Where did it go? That, that car. See that car right there? I've driven that car, that exact car. That is the uh, Royal McLaughlin Buick. And uh, boy, I found that, there's a video on my channel. If you go back, you'll find uh, Vern and, and I, and we ended up uh, getting it to the museum and did a whole unveiling. It was part of our adventure. One of our early adventures here on Curiosity Inc. was getting that car and getting it to a museum. Anyway, it's kind of neat. I keep saying it's kind of neat because, well, it is, and I guess I'm just, I'm, I'm looking at the same time you guys are. So this royal stuff will set aside. I think I'm almost at the bottom of the, the bin here. McLean's magazine. Yeah, this more royal family stuff. Them on the back of the royal train. The 1951 visit. Standard. Yep, somebody was very interested in the royal family. Donna Reed. And this is all tied up. I wonder what's in here. It looks like a school presentation of some kind. We'll find out. Let's see if we can get it opened up. Well, it turns out that it's world news. And then they had national news. Which is good. Teaching kids at that time how to read the paper and what to look for and how to get the news. 
I guess it's, now they have the internet, but it's not quite the same. Okay, well, that's the bottom of the barrel right there. And more Esquire magazines. All right, trunk is explored. Um, I wonder if it's sellable. It looks a little dusty, but it doesn't look like it's moldy or anything. It's <laughs> looks like an old pirate chest. We'll see if we can save the trunk. But uh, I still have to go work my way around the room and into those cupboards, which are completely full of who knows what. Okay, I hauled the uh, doll pram out of the way so I could kind of have a little look down in here. And there was clothes, but the mice got to them. Shoes. Sorority Debs. Boy, those are going back a few years. Look, Chicks Movie Star Shoes. <laughs> I guess that's your Marilyn Monroe kind of look right there. Coleman... Uh, that's a Coleman camp stove. Got an electric stove there. This is empty. That looks like pine cones. Somebody's maybe project. It's wood that's been painted gold. There is a trunk back here. It's an old tent. <sighs> rocks. Looks like somebody maybe did some camping, collected rocks at one point. Look at this. Shooting is fun with whiz bang, CIL 22. And are they in there? It's heavy. Yeah, I think it's full 22s. Makes you wonder where the, the gun is since there's, where there's bullets, usually there's a gun. Oh. Okay, well, styrofoam, that's gonna be garbage. Oh, toys. That sounds promising. Let's see. Well, there's a big classic Jeep, a cap gun. Oh, actually, this is kind of cool. That's neat. That's an old license plate topper. That's that's a good one. That's a good, good piece, that is. don't know what the Jeep is, but it looks like it would work with... Uh, G.I. Joe size. And then we got to make sure it's a cap gun since I found actual bullets. Detective 250. Oh, well, still works. Okay. A couple neat things. A little toy shovel. And that must be the little jerry can for the back of the for the back of the Jeep. Yes it is. So guys, that's it for this episode. Next episode, we are going to be back in the house clearing more stuff, throwing out more garbage, and I'm going to search the attic. We're going to do an attic exploration, and that should be fun. I mean, it's always fun to go look in an attic. So stay tuned for that episode, guys. I hope you're enjoying this series. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, make sure to do that by hitting the subscribe button and the like one. That one helps too. And uh, we'll see you guys on the next episode. As always... Bye for now.